Hi, and welcome to Homo Ludens, the channel on history and board games. And this show is a bit special tonight as it's brought to you by the coffee backers, so the people supporting that channel. Uh, it is uh, content that they voted for because we were having a discussion with Voco around what game he would want to come and teach and play on the channel. He offered me a few games. Then I offered it to the votes of the coffee backers, and they decided for Verdun 1916, Steel Inferno. Uh, after talking with Voco, well, we reflected upon a discussion that we had with uh, Jason uh, a while ago when we were talking about CDGs with Mark Herman. Uh, and Jason Matthews was saying that he wanted uh, to get the game. And then uh, I realized that it was still on his shelf of shame. So I asked him if he wanted to come and we could have a game where Voco is teaching us uh, Verdun and we would play against each other. So thanks a lot, everyone, for joining. I can see that there is quite a few people in the chat, so that's really nice to see. I'm happy that Alan could made it, and apparently there was a change of time in the US, so that must have uh, screwed up maybe a few things, I'm not sure. Brendan is here, Russ is here, so that's really great. Uh, and we have the board game bloke, which is good because we're using your Vassal module for that session, so thanks a lot for your work uh, for this one, but also for a lot of other uh, Vassal modules that you're doing. Um, including the one for the playtest of Jest of Robin Hood. So thanks a lot for that. Um, Russ is here. Ibai is here. And Ibai, we still have a video to do on uh, Crusada de los Tres Reyes, but uh, we can talk about this at another time. But thanks to everyone for being here. Super excited about this. And let's welcome our two guests, Volko and Jason Matthews. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Very well. Hi, gentlemen. Yes, but thanks for uh, taking the time, uh, I guess. Um, I uh, So we have a, a, a bit of a hard stop with, for you, Voco. You are only here for, for the for the first two hours. And then uh, I guess Jason and I will uh, we'll try to figure it out ourselves. But I hope that after two hours, we should be able to tell <laughs> <with> the game. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident. How do you feel, Jason? You, 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 you look a bit sad, and I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be okay. <laughs> I have all the confidence of a uh, Russian mechanized commander. <laughs> okay, a current one, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be great. And that's good because you're playing the French, so you're going to be on the receiving end, um, especially as we're probably going to play only the beginning of the game. I would be playing the Germans, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm on the offensive, so you're going to have a, a lot on your plate. Just to explain why I made that um, an orthodox uh, decision of playing the Germans is usually when I play those kind of games, I usually tend to take the other side, Yeah, you could say, because then if I win, I'm happy that I have one. And if I lose, I'm happy that the French won. So that's a bit my, <laughs> so that's my, that's my approach to those, to those, uh, to those kind of games. Um, so yeah, Verdun 1916. So we, we talked a lot about it uh, during the CDG discussion that we had a few months ago with, uh, with Mark. And both you, Volko, and Mark, uh, you had it pretty high on your top list of CDGs. Yes. Uh, and after that, so Jason, did you end up getting the game or how did I did, you and I'm glad. I bought it immediately after that because it became very, very hard to find shortly thereafter. Yeah, uh, Walter told me that after that, uh, there was quite a, a lot of, yeah, uh, we, we did sell a few copies. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I hope that it, it's good. It's good. It, it, it made it hard to find, but I, I think it was, um, it was cool to, um, to uh, uh, cast a bit of light on, 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 that, uh, on that game. Um, what, and I guess I'm going to leave the things to you, Volko, and, and let you uh, lead uh, this, uh, this stream. I'm, I'm, you're the host, uh, and, I'm, and I will just be a guest, if that's okay with you. That, that, that is fine. And so let me say a little bit about how I intend to proceed, because in learning games, I find I have a very hard time just listening to somebody tell me the rules. I, I never learn a game that way. Uh, so my intent is not to tell you the rules, but, but rather just a little bit of orientation in terms of what we're looking at on the game board, uh, what, what the game is trying to, to simulate, and then what you're trying to do to win, and some very basic uh, ideas of, of how uh, play goes forward. And then we'll kind of launch and bumble forward. And our viewers will be generous with you that you're not playing optimally because our purpose is, is not a optimal play, but, but rather learning. So that's, uh, that's the game plan I propose. They Can weren't we... going to get optimal play from me one way or the other. Well, so. yeah, they're not going to get <laughs> optimal play anyway. So yeah. can give that part up, you know, so it won't matter. We're going to learn as we go. And after all, the real life uh, combatment Battens, when they started this battle, they didn't know the rules either. So uh, it will be realistic. So, um, so can we 
go ahead and have a look at the Vassal screen, uh, the, the Tim Porter Vassal module. All right, so, so uh, Verdun 1916, still Inferno, so here after Verdun, um, is, is a CDG that is, is really elegant in its ability to show the dynamics of, of Western trench warfare. And it does that while also showing over the course of what must be the longest single field battle, at least that I can think of, of showing the, the, the ebbing of the German power, especially the artillery and the, and the French recovery and ability to counterattack. We're not going to see all of that, of course, today, because that's over the course of uh, a six turn game. And we're going to get through probably a couple of turns. But it does all that with uh, really very uh, few rules and bits. So what you're looking at in terms of bits, there are just two kinds of wooden pieces. The, the, the chunkier looking ones are units and the thinner looking ones are trenches. And, and that's the main thing that's on the map. The, the little national symbols are simply the front line. There are a few other small markers that come into play. Each side can have up to three units in a space and one trench. And uh, that's it. The units can be either fresh or exhausted. They're all starting fresh, of course. And, uh, and they'll move around and fight. And, and that's basically what you're going to see on the board. The uh, cards are like a CDG, um, will offer either action points or an event. And very often, if you take the event, you also get some action points. Uh, and that's pretty typical. But critically, uh, for a trench battle, the only way you can attack is with an artillery barrage. You're just not going to go in with just infantry. And so certain cards are barrage cards that if you play them, they're the only way you can attack. And if you play them, that's all you're doing. You're barraging. You're not moving anything else besides what's immediately supporting the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the offensive, the attack that you're undertaking with those barrage cards. So, uh, so that's sort of how things work as we proceed and in a very general way. What are you trying to do? So on the battlefield here, we see the Meuse in the middle. And we see uh, some victory spaces in various colors. And the, the first objective for both sides is to prevent a breakthrough. Uh, the Germans, if they can just hold two red stars in the south center, they have captured Verdun and they win the game, regardless of points. So the French absolutely need to prevent a breakthrough. Similarly, all the black dots and blue dots are geographic victory points. And you'll notice that along each side's uh, home line in the, in the rear of each side is a row of victory points for the other side. So in the end of the, the battle, the German does not want to have the French up at the north edge of the map. So that's a lot of points. But most of the time, the points that are going back and forth are in the center, and there are actually not very many at all. This is just a lot of forest, and it's going to be a lot of mud by the time the armies are, are through. But we see at the center of the, the right bank of the Meuse, we see Fort Duhamel. There's a blue circle with a three and a black circle with a one. And that is right now really the only victory point that anybody holds is the French. If they can hold on to that space on the first turn, they will earn those three blue victory points. Uh, if the Germans take it, they'll get one. So that net four victory points, that's about it. The little forts, the red uh, squares are also each worth half a victory point. But in the beginning, the only close geographic objective for the Germans is Fort Duhamel. So that's not a lot of points. And that's because Verdun, of course, is fundamentally a battle of attrition. The whole point of the battle from the German command side was to kill so many French that it would bleed France white and France would leave the war. And so the, the victory is really killing more of the enemy than you lose of your own men, because, of course, the Germans don't want to bleed the French white by also bleeding themselves white. Mm. And wonderfully for play, you can have as many reinforcements as you want. But every unit that you bring in will cost you a victory point, will give a victory point to the enemy. And so we're going to see a, a, a tension between these geographic objectives and the imperative to prevent a breakthrough and the call on more and more bodies to go into the line, to hold the line. So that's what you're trying to do. There are some other victory points that come from events tying the, the battle into the rest of the war. We won't worry about that for now. 
for, so the first thing we need to do is have you each draw your hands of cards. And it's a little bit different on this special first turn because the Germans are launching their surprise attack. You're each gonna start with two required cards that, that Tim has already put into your hands for the scenario setup. And then the French, and that's, so that's, that's you, Jason, you're gonna draw up to eight cards. So another six cards to add to those two. And Fred, you're gonna draw to get to 10. So you get uh, more cards than usual. And then we're going to play the first turn, which is seven cards, seven rounds played from these two hands of cards. So I already have two cards in my hand. Um, and the cards that I have, because the people in the stream can see I'm going to place on the map. So I have a six value barrage. Uh, and I have another card that is an event that's uh, called Chaos on the Rear. Uh, so those are the two cards that I have. And as you can see, that was what Volker was saying. You have two kinds of cards with different alignments. And you see that um, uh, a portrait alignment is the regular card with ops value on the top and an event at the bottom and the indication on which turn it can be played. Uh, and then you've got this uh, this other card on that are on the side, and those are the, the barrage cards with the barrage value that is in the, the middle of an explosion, right? So that's the this this is a barrage of six. That is correct. And so those two cards happen to be the required starting cards for the Germans, and then. Um, and then we're seeing other cards here that are examples of, um, of French, French cards. And the little red and white circles that you saw there, as you mentioned, Fred, this is the scripting of the deck that's going to have the deck effortlessly for the players show the changing balance of power over the course of the battle. It's, very, it's uh, somewhat like in Twilight Struggle, the, the, the deck itself changes as you play the game. And the same will be true here. So I don't know if we want to show the, the hands or not on the screen or if you That's just... going to be tricky if we do. Okay. <laughs> That's so, the so then, then uh, Jason, do you have your hand of eight cards ready? Oh, uh, you're muted, Jason, and I'm going to unmute you. So yeah, you're ready? <laughs> yes, I am. I've got my eight. Okay. And, yeah. and I don't pick cards. I have two ready and I just draw eight extra, right? It sounds like the advantage here in propaganda is the German can mute the French if uh, if, if necessary. <laughs> yes, <laughs> reports are too unfavorable. Uh, okay, so if you both have your your hands, as I mentioned, the German has a larger hand because you've been preparing this attack. And we'll see on the left side those uh, brown um, bars numbered one to seven with a, a black uh, piece there for the Germans. These are just the rounds to keep track of who's played how many cards. And it's just going to be a German card, a French card, or rather round uh, until we're done. There are seven rounds. So, so the Germans will have seven rounds to use if they want up to 10 cards. And so, yes, you can use more than one card in a turn. We'll talk about that when, when it uh, comes up. And the, uh, the French will have eight cards for their seven rounds. Um, we can talk about the other tracks later. We're on turn one. You see turns on the right there. We're in turn one, which is just February. So that means, Fred, you're going to play the first card to activate units, just like in a CDG. You can use the event. You can use the, uh, the action points without the event or some very often, if you play an event, you also get a smaller number of action points. And action points are going to be for things like moving your units around. If you want to attack, you have to use barrage cards. And typically, you can only play one card per round. But there is an exception to that. And that is, if you use only plain barrage, you can add a second plain barrage in the same or a, a different space. Mm. So you actually can attack with two plain barrage cards on the same round if you want to. And you can even use them together on the same space. So, so those are really your options. You're looking at your hand. You realize your mission is to kill French and take territory, especially Fort Duomo. Uh, what do you want to play for, for round one? So the thing that I'm thinking about, and I'm going to think out loud because this is a learning game. Um, I, I'm thinking that uh, what I would like to do is maybe gain air superiority early in the round. So mm -hmm. then I can benefit from... I think air superiority gives me the opportunity to reroll the barrage cards uh, and, and helps me within an assault. And I'm going to do an, a lot of assaults in the, in the next couple <laughs> yes. of turns. So I'm thinking about playing air superiority straight away. 
So let's see that card. That's a great idea. Let's see that card. Okay, so here's the card and you'll notice, let's look at this card close up. So you have an event, air support, and it tells you the, the effect. And the upper right, you see it could be used for three actions. Uh, so if, if Fred uses air support to help him gain air superiority, he's not gonna get to take any actions on this round. It's a complete uh, respite uh, for, for, he's not gonna be attacking, he's not gonna be moving, he's not gonna be drawing reinforcements. All he's doing is establishing air superiority. Uh, and as you mentioned, Fred, air superiority is absolutely critical because you can only attack with artillery. You, this is trench warfare. The effectiveness of your artillery will determine the effectiveness of your uh, assault. And the more, uh, the stronger your air superiority, the more your air observation is helping your gunners, your artillerymen be accurate. Uh, and and avoid friendly fire. So this is absolutely a, a very important thing to have. The air superiority track is on the right side of the game board. There's a white marker and it slides from zero where it starts one box in the direction of whoever plays air support. Naturally, the French will also have some airplanes eventually. And that is the complete effect of that card. So that card is now discarded and we have played German round one. And I sent it to the discard pile. So and now the... The French are up, and uh, so the various. Let me give you. Um, <laughs> let me give you uh, a various um, options here. Uh, theoretically, you could barrage, and you you could just attack, not to risk your troops in an infantry assault, but just to harass the Germans and exhaust them. Uh, you can do that with what few guns and ammunition you have. You can bring in more reinforcements. You can strategically move from your reserve onto the map or around the map. You can tactically move around the map and you can dig more trenches in any part of the map that belongs to you. Um, or you can play additional events. So I'm just gonna mention one uh, required event card that you have, Jason. And my, and my French pronunciation is gonna be, is it Castelno? Castelno, yeah. Castelno, yeah. Castelno. So this is a card you always have. And I just want to mention this, that, that this uh, fellow here is extremely important because the word combo there, combo, voie sacré, combo means it's a precondition. You have to have played this card to get the card voie sacré, which comes in next turn. That is the sacred way, the road by which the French army will reinforce the Verdun battlefield. And that will give you a massive infusion of free reinforcements. So I just mentioned now, sometime during this turn, you're very much going to want to have played this card, Castelno. Well, it seemed to me that that was the right starting card and was probably in my starting hand for a good reason. So I was inclined to play it anyway. So let's have a look at him then, uh, close yeah. up. So we see once again, we have the four action points in the upper right. That's if you don't use the event. If you play the event, you're going to get its effect. Plus, you can see a smaller two little, two little red bullets right. there. That means you're going to get the event plus two action points. The event, the fact that it's red uh, and underlined means it's a, linger, a lingering effect. He's going to be in play for as long as the card is in play, which is turns one and two. You can see at the bottom. And mm -hmm. you also get an immediate little bonus. You're going to get a free strategic move. And then on top of that, you're going to get two action points to do other stuff with. So I don't know where um, we can put him so that we see that he's still in play, perhaps off to the right so side. I think like if you or there's uh, a window play card to box on the map, I guess. There may be. Yeah. Or send to events card window, I think, because yeah, there is I a window. There, or, yeah. There's a window that, that Tim has put in yeah. here to show us which... Uh, events remain in effect and we can you know perhaps go look at that yeah. so the french for round one are playing castle no so first a free strategic move so let's talk about how strategic moves works strategic move is from any one place to other places that you control and have a supply line to which is basically your entire front line or anything behind and it can be a maximum of three units, but they have to all come from one place. So you could strategic move one of your units in the front line to somewhere else, or most of the time you strategic move from your reserve. So if we look at the lower right corner of the board, we see that the French already have three fresh units in reserve waiting to, uh, to enter play. So one option would be to use your free strategic move 
to uh, bring those troops in. And it doesn't have to be all of them and they don't have to go to the same place, but you could bring up to three in with one action point. And in this case, it's a one action point free strategic move from the event. Well, that sounds like a plan. What does? <laughs> I mean, I, I'll take the three uh, French ah, reserves yeah. and deploy them. Okay, fair enough. And uh, it feels like they should go to protect the victory points as best they can. All right, so the, uh, the, the reserve has been committed to stiffen the, the line on the right flank. The French ha have noticed by air activity that something is in the offing. And you still have left two action points. So um, you, could, you could move your units around the map if you wanted. They're already kind of evenly spaced, so not too much to be gained there yet. You could dig more trenches. You could start to dig a fallback line of trenches. One action point digs two trenches in your own area. Or oh, that's appealing. And or because you have two action points to spend, you could start to bring in more reinforcements. And for one action point, you can add up to three units from the pool to your en route box, and they will become available to you in the reserve next round. Every unit that you bring in will award the Germans one victory point. Got it. Well, I'm going to... It was two trenches for one action point? Correct. Yeah. As so, long as it's your own uh, space that's uncontested, which is everything you've got. So that's two. We'll do this. And then I'll bring in three French reserves. All right. So if we look on the left, we let's look at the victory point track all the way over on the left of the map. So it starts at zero. All the Germans have to do to win is end up at the end of the battle at zero or better. If they could just <laughs> hold their own. Um, the French to win actually have to push that to the blue minus one. But for starters, uh, we're going to give the Germans three points since they've already drawn in three uh, lambs to the slaughter, three uh, French units into the Verdun area. And then from the pool, you add units to the en route box. En route just means they're not available to you this same round. Uh, you can't on the same card get them yet. They're, they're on the way. But next card, they'll be in the reserve for you. All right, where's the pool? So I can I can bring them for you if that's uh, simpler. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna put uh, uh, three uh, three units. Oh, there. Never mind. I see where it is. Ah, uh, you can see them. But no, uh, go ahead and you can complete the task. But now I see where where I need to go. And that's gonna be one, two, and three here from the reserve to your en route. So to review, um, Jason as a French for his first card, play the event Castle No. That stays in play and will give him the Voix Sacre reinforcements next uh, turn in, in March um, or whenever he draws that card. Gave him a free strategic move that he used for his reserves to put them in the front and gave him two action points. He dug trenches with one action point for two trenches and brought in three new units reinforcements for the second action point. So that ends the French round one. So those three en route units are now in reserve. Good, then we'll go to the second action round for the Germans. So I'm moving my marker to indicate that. And now it's gonna get bloody. <laughs> uh, so now that I have air superiority uh, and I don't want to give uh, the French too much time to prepare, I'm going to start doing my first offensive. Um, and you said that I can play up to do two barrage cards. If so, they're normal barrage cards, you can play two and they may be in the same space or different spaces. Good. Then I think that I will play a barrage card uh, in that space here. Uh, 
Yes, I will start with one barrage card that has a value of uh, that has a value of six. Okay, so you're not playing two car barrage cards, only one. Because... Uh, that's what I, so that's what I'm wondering because I'm thinking if I have air superiority, it sounds like I can afford only to play one because there is only one unit here. Or do you think it's too risky? Well, uh, it's it's a good chance of of success with air superiority and a six against one unit. But I'll remind you, you don't have to put both barrage on the same space. You can attack in two spaces if you want. Ah, uh, that's true, and I could make the hole bigger. Uh... You could even attempt a pincer. Yes, yes, that's very true. Okay, I'm going to play. Oh, hmm. And then just to, to indicate, so some of the those terrains have, uh, so those are hills, that, so they're a bit harder to take, right? They are um, heights, uh, and they are not harder to take, but they will hurt you more. If you get into an infantry battle, the defender will cause more damage to you. Okay. By good. the way, Tim has given us this lovely combat location markers. I've just put one on that hill at space 16 just to show where this barrage is hitting. So then I think what I will do is I will play two barrage cards. And I will play so uh, one here. And then I will play the second one here. So can I? Yeah, I'm going to clone this one and play it here. Great. Now... Uh, so there's two barrages. So a, a little rules twist. If your two barrages were in the same place, which you can do, you'd have 12 uh, uh, for your barrage. If you do that, then the defender has the option to counter barrage. And Jason could play a barrage card from his hand that would subtract from your total of 12. But if you barrage in separate places, that is not an option. So he just has to sit and take it. So now... The question is, do you want to commit an infantry assault to uh, back up your artillery barrage to try to take the space and get your infantry involved? And if I do. So, you may move into those spaces up to three total of your units. They have to be fresh. All your units are fresh. And they have to be adjacent. And no more than three can go in, but they can come in from any adjacent spaces. And so here is the maximum uh, infantry assault on each of these two uh, pieces of the French trench line. And now you can do a follow-up move that is all part of your barrage attack, your infantry assault. And that is you can fill in units that, that um, in the spaces that your three units left from. So if we look, for example, on the right-hand side there, you had two units come from space five and one unit come from space six on the right. Yeah. You could now have other adjacent units one for one fill in. If you wanted to bring more Germans into those spaces to fill in behind, you'd be so allowed to So I could have that. one from here coming here or one from here coming here. Just Correct. To, yeah. As long as it's one for one for the units that left to assault. Okay. But I'm not going to do that. Okay. And did you want to do that uh, over by the Meuse on the left? You could do uh, it there too, uh, even across I, the river if you want. I know, and I can go across the Meuse. Yes. And actually, yeah, we'll do this across the Meuse, and I will send that unit. Uh... Ah, wait a minute. That might be a bit risky, though. Or is it? Duck? Well, you, you know, you have to watch Jason like a hawk, so I'm not going to say it's not risky. Yeah, and and it's and I can go across the Meuse. This is this this yes. doesn't block. Yeah. So the uh, the 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 Meuse the Meuse blocks a couple of things. You cannot infantry ac assault across. So if the enemy is defending the opposite bank, you cannot send your infantry across. You can barrage him, but you can't attack with the infantry. That's one. The other effect of the the Meuse is that you cannot move uh, two spaces across it. You can only move one space across. So we haven't really talked about tactical movement, but it's an impediment to tactical movement. There's also a special rule down by Verdun in terms of the bridge and attacking across that bridge, but we don't need to worry about that yet. Okay, so I will do that move. So I will move uh, one unit from here to here. Okay. Because I'm so, expecting that I'm going to be more active on that side of the board. On the, on the right bank, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so you can see that Fred was required to commit 
all of his infantry assaults before knowing how well did his barrages go, right? Because it's all a big plan and everybody's ready to go and you barrage and hope for the, that the French are dead and then you walk over and see if they're alive or not. So now we're going to do the barrages and as the attacker, uh, the German can decide which one of these two uh, does, does he want to resolve first. We're going to do 13 first, so the one okay. closest to the Meuse. All right. The barrage six means we're going to be rolling six dice. It's a six dice barrage. And on, on the dice, when you roll the dice, a four, five, or six is a hit. And a six allows you to add an additional die roll. You keep the hit, and you may roll another die for every six you roll. And... If because of the air superiority, remember that the Germans have air superiority, they get two benefits from the air superiority. The first is they are immune to friendly fire. Usually, if you march into an enemy hex like this, a enemy hex, any space like this, and um, and roll three sixes, every three sixes is a friendly fire. You take a hit on your own troops from the artillery. If you have air superiority, there's no friendly fire. You're immune to that. Second, and even more importantly, when Fred is done rolling all his dice, if he doesn't like the result because of air superiority, he can startle over. He gets a single time to re-roll his entire barrage if he wants to. Okay? All right. So we're rolling six dice for a six barrage card against uh, space 13 there. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to roll six dice. And I roll uh, three hits. So a four, a four, and a five. Okay, so uh, one, two, and three are misses. Four, four, and five are hits. There are no sixes, so that's it. You're, you're done with this barrage unless you take the reroll. What do three hits do? So hits work like this. The first hit is absorbed by a trench if there's a trench. Another two hits are absorbed by a fort if there's a fort. There's not a fort here, but there is a trench. The next hits exhaust fresh units one hit per unit so each fresh unit absorbs a hit to become exhausted and will turn that unit 90 degrees to show it's exhausted uh, 90 degrees in the vassal module in the physical game you're taking stand-up blocks and you're laying them down uh, and then it takes two hits round it down two hits to kill an exhausted unit that's it that's so what so if I wanted to wipe out the area before uh, my offensive, if I had four hits, that would be successful. One hit for the trench, one hit for exhausting, and two hits for killing the unit. Exactly right. So here, if you keep this roll, you're going to have one of your three hits is the trench, which does nothing. One hit exhausts the French unit. And then there's one hit left, which is not enough to kill him. So you're going to go to an infantry battle. Or you can say, I'm going to use my air superiority and I'm going to roll my six dice over and then you're stuck with whatever you get. Yeah, and I will have the ability to re-roll for my next barrage because it's one re-roll per barrage. Correct. Good, but I think I will take the risk. Okay, so we're using air superiority, re-rolling, go ahead. And I roll a five, Aha. a six, and a six. So it means I'm going to be able to roll two extra dice. You get two more dice. And I have three hits already. You already have three hits. And I don't have an extra hit, but okay. it was, yeah, it was worth it. Just to mention, every six you roll, you can keep rolling. So yeah. if you, on an added roll, got another six, you could keep rolling again. But if you don't have air superiority, you have to worry because three sixes and you start to take hits on yourself. Yeah. Okay, so the final result is three hits that merely exhausts but does not kill the French heroes in the front line there. So we want to... Uh, so that turning it that way is our symbol in this vassal module, that that French unit is exhausted. And now, because the French are still there, the defender has survived, we're going to do the infantry battle. And the infantry battle is deterministic. There's no dice here. And it works like this. Uh, every fresh attacker is going to create one hit. Every fresh defender is going to create three hits. These are the machine guns, right? Every exhausted defender is going to create one hit. A height, a hill, if there is one, adds a hit. And by the way, fortresses are ignored. Fortresses only help you against barrages, not against the infantry battle. Okay, so what do we see in this case? The Germans are doing three hits, three fresh units. The French are doing um, one, hit, one hit, 
right? And that's, that's it. So the three hits, one is absorbed by the trench and the two remaining German hits are enough to kill that French unit. But before he dies, that French unit will exhaust one of the German units. So it's exhausted and I will send the other to the stock. Correct. And then I can remove also the trench. Yes, you will end up capturing that space which will remove the trench. Uh, it will also push his front line back and your front line forward. Good, so I'm placing a marker here um, and I will try to clone a marker here, another cocard so we know where it, yeah. And I will discard, discard. How does it go, Jason? Exciting, that was good. <laughs> Good. Uh, okay, so now we have a hole. So that's nice. So that was the first barrage. Uh, and now we can do the second barrage, which should be a bit more of the same. So right. once again, I'm rolling six dice. So same on the four to six. And this time I'm doing two hits and an extra hit. Do I need to decide if I want to reroll first uh, or... So you may as well go as far as you can with your sixes, and then you can decide. Do you keep the whole thing or start all over? Okay, then I'm going to roll an extra dice. and that's So that's four hits. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I need. And yeah. that is enough. That's the magic number against one entrenched fresh defender to destroy him. And I'm going to send to stock, send to stock, and I'm going Wait, to move this uh, Hold on one second, though. I have a card that allows me to absorb two artillery barrage hits. Aha! Let's, let's what? see it. <laughs> Leon. All right. So we have some cards, some events, as in many other CDGs, are actually response events. And so if we read the text here, it says discard. He's not playing it in a round. He's discarding to absorb two artillery barrage hits. And this is the, uh, the famous colonel who, you know, warned of the attack and had a... Uh, of an upfront defense that uh, stymied the Germans in one sector. Uh, pretty much, I think, where it's happening here. So reeling back, giving Jason his trench and his unit back, of those four barrage hits, he has canceled two of them. And I'm happy with that, because that means with the three remaining one, I will just get what I need anyway. So I'm... Yes. Uh, I would just but have... one of your one of your yeah. units again will be exhausted. So that's uh, what Drian has achieved. And and notice that the um, card title Drian is in yellow. That means it's a one time use. So he is that card is you throw it back in the box. It's out of the game because he died. Wait, I don't understand though. Um, he had four hits total. Yes. Yeah. And so I only did two. Let's go two. back and illustrate it. So he, he had, he's down to two hits. The first one is absorbed by the trench. Yeah. The second hit exhausts your unit. And then you fight the infantry battle. He's still uh, yeah, got, yeah, yeah, got refresh. Got refresh. Yeah, which is then enough to, to, to kill Right, you. got it, got it. But believe it or not, the exhausted um, makes a difference because the Germans, of course, need a high attack tempo here in February yeah. to, to achieve their goals. And if as long as you're barraging, you're not refreshing units. Another thing you can do with an action point is you can refresh your exhausted units. Two of them, if they're in a controlled uh, uh, space, a solely controlled space, one of them in a contested space. But if you're refreshing units, you're not barraging. So, so this card is, is removed from the, the game. game now. Removed yeah. from the game. And Good. notice that... For the seven rounds, Jason has eight cards, but he's just used one during the German round. So that means Jason is now down to just one card for each round unless he ends up passing. And you can pass. You don't have to play a card during a round. All right. So that was German um, round, round two. two. So now French round two. Okay. Well... It seems like I need to get these reserves up to the front quickly. Yes, yeah, so he has two holes in your line. And if you don't fill those, he can walk up two spaces. And now some more good news for you, Jason, as the <clears throat> uh, beleaguered French. While 
usually you can move two spaces on a tactical move if you don't touch any enemy troops and uh, don't cross the maze. On turn one, because of your general confusion, the French only get to tactically move one space. So you do have to be careful not to uh, allow too big of a gap to develop. Interesting. What, what are front morale points? Ah, uh, yes, thank you, because we need to pay attention to that. Let's look over on the left here. We see two uh, zero to 10 boxes with some, some darker colors at the bottom. Every time that a unit is killed, you lose a front morale point. So the French just lost two units. So actually right. your French morale would be eight. If you get down to three, that dark color there, if you get down to three, you may not do any infantry assaults, only barrages without infantry assault. Your troops will not go over the top. If you get to zero, you can't even barrage. Even your artillery does not want to fight anymore. However, every time you bring a unit from reserve to the game map, you gain one morale point. So the result of that is, by and large... If you're as long as you're shoveling more men into the front, as long as there are fresh divisions, your morale will hold up. And generally, what I have seen is toward the end of the game is when that becomes a problem, especially for the Germans. Because historically, in the last part of this battle, the German morale collapsed to the point that the Germans couldn't even effectively counterattack, and the French were able to retake what they'd lost. So this guy causes an issue by lowering my morale, but he allows for the Somme offensive, which seems like something I want to encourage. Yes. Um, although that doesn't go particularly well either. And, uh, <laughs> well, it's also bad for the Germans because the Somme offensive pretty much calls off the offensive at Verdun for the Germans. So you're right that the Somme offensive is very, very important. And on the French side, this is the, the mastermind here. So he, along with a second required card, a combo card, Haig, mm. will eventually let you play as many as four seven-point scoring cards, average seven-point scoring cards. So you can score in the end up to 28 victory points, believe it or not, for the Somme offensive, which is a lot. <laughs> if no you doubt. fulfill, right, if you fulfill. But yes, you do have to live with this guy for a while. Um, in the alternative, if I take the four action points, which is actually where I was headed, um, what happens to the event? It will go back into your deck and you'll it'll be available to you to draw again starting the next turn. Okay. Because the decks get remade and reshuffled every turn, meaning at the end of this, uh, at the end of February, and then after that, every other month, you're going to get the decks remade. And he's there for the duration. So you can always get him. But the Psalm, basically, to be on time, launches in July, right? So, hey, so you still have time to get him is the bottom line. All right. Well, fair enough. I think I will use uh, Joffrey for action points for now. And um, you said I can only move one strategic. Okay. So for tactical movement, here's how tactical movement works. You pick mm -hmm. any three units and they move one or two spaces. That's tactical movement. Two spaces if they don't touch any enemy units or across the Miz. For you, though, this turn, they can only go one. But you can pick three units now with each of those one action points, any three units, and move them a space. So you can do that. That's tactical movement. Strategic movement from any one space up to three units to anywhere you want that you own. And there's no Germans. So that's how, to get them out of reserve or to kind of, sh sh but for shuffling them around the map, the tactical move tends to be more efficient. I see. Well, it seems to me that this um, salient isn't so wonderful. So that's two guys. 
So you can move one more guy anywhere, uh, and that's just your merely your first action point out of four available. Uh, I need more men. <laughs> you may have them. This that's is the, the wonderful spirits. thing. This is the wonderful thing. You can have more men. <laughs> Um, okay, these are all problematic. So there is a, a question from Joe. Yes, the, the, the placement of trenches as an action has been mentioned. Uh, for each point, you can place up to two trenches. Two trenches in an uncontested space that you control. You can also dig in, place a trench in a contested space. We don't have any right now, but it can come up. And if you're in a 10 contested space, it costs your entire action point to place one trench there. Or we'll okay. refresh one unit there, by the way. So I I don't think um, the only question is do I should I be drawing back in anticipation to a new line? Well, if you're looking for strategic advice, hmm. don't leave a gap. Yeah, I don't. I definitely don't want to leave the gap. That that I will address with the reinforcements. I think the the question is, should I leave these guys up here or start pulling back now? Yeah. Well, that's what makes it an interesting game. <laughs> <laughs> we did win this battle, right? By we, I mean you. Yeah, yeah. We, we did. You, you, you guys were not. You guys were not there at that time yet. No, no, we're always late to the party. Um, okay, so I'm I'm not going to move any more units on the map. Okay. Like that, uh, I do need to bring in these reserves. And you said it's one one point for three. Correct. As yeah, long as they're all coming from the place, same place, and they don't have to go to the same place but they have to come from the same place for strategic move to cost just one point. All right, and I need to fix this problem. That's one, uh, let's... And when you say touch Germans, do you mean in the is adjacency touching Germans or does it have to be in the same spot? You can move adjacent. Okay, so this is fine. Yes. Okay, so that was two action points. Yes. Now. Oh, shit. No, <laughs> not quite. I left a gap. Okay. Um, now let's look at strategic uh, at uh, army morale again, or battlefield morale. Go over to the left there. Okay. Of the yeah. board. So you brought three units, Front so morale. that means plus three, and you are at eight, so that puts you back to ten. Yes, you're back to perfect morale because fresh divisions have arrived. Okay, you have used only two of your four action points. So as a reminder, other things you can do besides moving them around, you can refresh. Well, all your units are fresh. You can dig more trenches. Yeah, which two, two for one going to happen. You can, you can bring in more reinforcements. Three for one. So I will, I'm going to dig trenches. Um, and I need, I guess I'm going to dig four of them. So that would be your other two action points that you Indeed. have left. Mm -hmm. That one. Two, three, and four. Okay, so we had a tactical move, a strategic move, trench, and trench. All right, and and so that card then is discarded. It'll still be available uh, next turn. Um. And notice this is can be somewhat significant, so I'm just going to mention it now. There is no French reserve, so we'll see if that turns out to be a problem or not. So in the Vassal module, you can just hit the little um, clear move button at the top right, and it 
clears all those movements, and we go on to German round three. Mm. See a lot of opportunities now. Uh, but it's... Uh, uh, uh. Okay, um, let me think. I need to look at what I have left in my hand to see what's possible. I'm going to play a single barrage card. And I'm going to play it here. And I'm going to place a marker for that. If I can see, oh, I, can, I cannot get the, yeah. Volko, if you can place a, a marker in 24. Oh, it, uh, it's not uh, letting you go in there? Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, should I play another one? Uh, you might have to slide the. There's a little screen divider in. Ah, the yes, that's why. Right. Yeah. If you slide it left, you should see. Yeah. Now I know where it's from. Yeah. Okay. So that's gonna be one. No, I need to push. I need to push. Uh, and then I'm gonna play. <laughs> I need, I'm gonna play a second one. See, for a moment when you were pausing, I thought you might have thought to call off the offensive, but no, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not the that's not the spirit. Um, cool heads prevail. <laughs> and I'm gonna do a second barrage here. Uh, so for that first one, I'm actually gonna commit um, some infantry. So I'm gonna have one, two, and a third one here. And, and a quick comment it, on that. So you see the Germans have exhausted and fresh troops. When you do an infantry assault, it's only the fresh troops. He's only picking from the fresh troops for this. The, uh, the, the exhausted troops will not assault. Okay, go ahead, Fred. I'm sorry. And then because I move two from here, I'm going to yes. actually advance those two from here. There you go. Uh, and I move one from here, and I'm going to advance uh, that unit uh, from here. Yes. So that's what I am doing for the replacement. And here, it's going to sound surprising, but I am not going to assault here. Just a barrage, sort of a harassment barrage. Exactly, just to, mm -hmm. what I'd like to say is to tenderize the meat. That's, what I'm, okay. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm doing. All right, which are we doing first? Uh, we're doing the, the, the mean one first, just here. Okay, uh, six dice with air superiority. Six dice with air superiority, and I'm gonna roll six dice, and that's one, two, three, four hits. And, uh, uh, and I roll and I re-roll the six once. You add a roll actually rather yeah. than re-roll. Yes, okay. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Five, which you could now with air superiority keep or not. And just one other comment. Let's say you didn't have air superiority, you didn't put in any infantry, no friendly fire, right? It's very safe. Yeah. For you. But five would mean that I would actually um, spend these two units and kill one. Five is enough to kill one of those French. That's right. Yeah. So I'm going to flip. I should have attacked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Yeah. Flip. Uh, and actually, this one is going back to uh, setting it back to stock. Back to stock. And then the French army morale would drop by one for that. Yep. And I'm decreasing it by one. And then uh, what I'm going to do is resolve that attack. And for yes. this one, I also, so I'm going to send to the discard pile, roll six dice, two. And that's one, two, three. And I roll uh, another one because I rolled a six. And I'm going to re-roll the whole thing. All right. Air superiority. Oh, sorry. Uh, I rolled the wrong dice. Uh, and that's one, two, three, four, and I reroll uh, three, <laughs> three dice. Three, yeah, but that's course. useless because it's unless it's, he unless Jason had a card to cancel hit. So you know you might, as a matter of best practice, keep going. There's yeah. no friendly. So you could see you, that would have been a friendly fire if you didn't have air superiority. What happens on friendly fire is for every three sixes, one of your units takes a hit from your own artillery. So I just did the fifth hit and rolling a six again. So I'm I'm going yes, to see keep how. Going. And seven hits, and it's a six again. Oh, and an eighth hit. 
Okay, and nine hits. Okay, nine <laughs> hits. Okay, so that is definitely that hill is is wiped out. So those French die. Minus one. Yes. <laughs> so send to stock. Send to stock, and morale is now at eight, and this goes into the discard. Now, uh, let me show you a, 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 an effect here about supply. If you look at the space you just took, that hill, number 24, you'll see that there's an isolated French. And if there was a, a unit there, it would now be frozen. At the beginning of the French round, we're going to judge supply. And that space 14 is a French space that's out of supply. So there's a marker for that. Uh, let's see. It looks like... That's not it. Where? How do I make this blue? Can you flip I it? Know. I don't know. Maybe it actually. Maybe it doesn't matter. It, it's because it's clear that it's French because it's a French space. So yeah, that's low supply. Um, and what's going to happen is at the beginning of every French round, that's going to advance from one to two to gone. Their units there would be frozen. On L2, they become exhausted, and on L3, they die, and the whole space becomes German, unless the French break through. All right, so that was German round three. So now we have French round three. Okay. I'm going to cure my moves. Yeah, go ahead and... Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jason, it doesn't look good. It doesn't it does look not. good. Yeah, I don't want to put some pressure on you, but I think this is already the beginning of the end. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Oh, Lord. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking I need more. I, I, I'm going to have to do another <laughs> round of action points so I can bring in reserves. Yeah, and because they are, they're only going to be available next round, so I would definitely go for three to six reserve uh, to yeah. be available next turn to be able to. So at least if I manage to exploit that hole, at least you'll have enough troops to make a line. Um, right. That's kind of where my head was. Um, I'm not, yeah, I have to play this card sometime. And I think since I'm going to use it, why are you fighting with me, Dick? Oh yeah, but let's think of that that we didn't say we were five minutes late because in five minutes Volko had to, to teach Jason how to use Vassal. So it's a, it's a it's a lot of first times tonight. While uh, Jason is uh, thinking strategically and practicing his Vassal skills, I'll just note um, something here of the, the interesting dynamics. You know, trench battles there'd be a big attack. You uh, generally it would succeed in taking the enemy trenches, but then the enemy with its reserves would counterattack. And, uh, and restore the line. And you'll see that effect happening in this game too, because you'll notice that the French right now on the front line are all still in trenches. The Germans are not in trenches. So if, if the French had enough of a pause here to just get off a small barrage, they would almost certainly exhaust and maybe even kill some Germans who are out in the open. Of course, the problem is if the French barrage, they're not filling the gaps or bringing in more reinforcements. And so that's the uh, that's kind of the the, the, the the tension of the trench uh, warfare dynamics that the game brings out so well. And is there a way to refresh spent units? Yes. So one action point refreshes two exhausted units if it's in an uncontested space. If it's in a contested space, one action point, one unit. So um, since I think I'm bringing on um, six German victory points, I think I'll just use this card now to do that. 
Okay, so you're going to leave the hole and go ahead and bring six units on route. That's the idea. Okay. Now, just let, let's have a look, close look at this card here. You'll see uh, that it's sort of no event. The civilians hold firm, a little bit, bit tongue-in-cheek there. It does nothing except give you two action points, which isn't much. It's a basically a kind of a dud event. But notice at the bottom that it's in the French deck only for the first two turns. And then it goes out. So what you're going to see is the French force is going to become more and more effective by this natural um, flow of cards through the deck. And the German has its own share of, of, of these kind of cards, but they come in turns five and six. So six from the pool to en route. Yeah, wait, where and is it? I, I, that's, I was uh, wrong. Oh, yeah, I can, I can bring them in for you. All right, thank you. And six victory points to the Germans who are now at nine. And so again, you'll notice the score has moved from zero to nine points for the Germans, not anything to do with territory they've taken, but rather the pressure that they've applied on the French to throw more bodies into the line. All right, this is a gutsy move. Open corridor now, straight to Verdun. Let's see what the Germans do with it. Yeah, straight to Verdun. I only moved two, <laughs> two, two steps. And the problem is which event I'm going to spend for that. Uh, and I think it's a bit painful, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the flamethrower, which is a really good event, but I know I will have the opportunity to play it in round two. Um, so I'm going to spend it now to get the four points. Uh, it's an event that would have made my infantry assault uh, give a one additional hit, which could be useful. But I think that exploiting the gap is more important now than, than anything. So first point, I'm going to move three units. One. Two. Uh, one, two, one, two, and three. Then I'm going to build uh, trenches with my second point. I'm going to build a trench here. Gonna build a trench here. And actually, I'm gonna build a trench here and here. So that's gonna be three points overall. And my last point, my, oh, it's hard. This hook you're building reminds me of Gettysburg. <laughs> uh, my last point. Why well, could do strategic moves now, or you could? Uh, yes, now technically strategic move is first, but it really doesn't matter very much because you can only strategic move to your own space, and the spaces change hands at the end of the round. Okay, yeah. So don't don't flip the control markers yeah. yet. Technically, that's still a French space, but you could strategic move into space twenty four, and then those same units could tactical move from there, for example. Strategic move, you don't have a reserve, so that would have to come from any one space on the map for each AP. Hmm. And I know that he's not going to be able to attack from here to here, so this one is actually quite safe. As long as you have at least one unit there, yeah. Yeah, one, two, three. Okay, and my last point, I'm going to spend it to also uh, move units. So he's going to move here. He's going to move here. 
and it's going to move here. Okay. So now, um, and, and I, I could move across that space, right? Uh, you could move across that space. Absolutely. There's no units there. So you could go to, even though you don't control it and the control would change. So if you're happy with that move, we will um, then change the control to look like this. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm just. Uh, I think we should be good. And I and and because I went through here, did I change control of space? 14? Yes, because you moved through there, you do. So this goes back to stock. That goes away. And it's really behind your front line, so you don't even need the marker. Your front line has moved up. Yeah. So I'm gonna discard that card. French four. Well, obviously I'll be using it for movement and- No French hospitals? Five. I'd love to have them, but uh, we're going Crimea war style. Okay. <laughs> um, so, And no worse. I think I will probably never <laughs> wear a pico hub. So this, that is two points. And I have two points left. Uh, one of which I'll use to um, give the Germans another three victory points. That I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm most generous. And then you want me to bring you three units? If you wouldn't mind. Yeah. And I will... Um, I'll place two trenches with the last point. And just a reminder, uh, across the uh, river, where you just put that trench, oh. he can he can barrage you across but there. But he can't assault you, me. But he can't assault you. And you do already have the fort there, which absorbs the first two points of a barrage. All right. So that's more important. So we discard that card. And you can move your en route units to reserve. Oh, no, they were just added right now. Right. So they will, at the end of his round, be in reserve for his next yeah. card. So as soon as he's done with his round, you can move him up. Which and I then, am. And then it's uh, German 5. Good. German 5. Still so much things to do. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see what I can do, actually. Um, hmm. Uh, Isn't it frustrating? Those French just keep coming. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm actually wondering. I might have made a mistake on the pre uh, on the previous turn. Oh, I think I have an idea. Um, <laughs> it's a thinky game. Yeah, uh, I'm going to play, I'm going to do a gas attack. Okay, so let's talk about gas attack. 
Um, you're going to love it, Jason. Uh, so <laughs> we have here a very special kind of card. It's an event, gas attack, but it's also a barrage. It's an event that includes as part of the event a barrage. Note, this is technically an event, not a barrage. You can't add a second barrage card uh, to it. But um, but it's you'll see it's quite powerful. Okay, where is the gas attack landing? It's happening here. All right. Because I what think what happens this is... if you uh, question from Patrick Pictures? What happens if you put the French in a pocket? So they are out of supply, and it takes them three rounds to die. They're frozen. On the second round, they are exhausted, and on the third round, they all die, and the space converts to the enemy side. So it's very important to avoid getting pocketed. So I'm attacking here, and that means that before I roll my barrage, I'm going to flip those two units. That's what's going to happen. But don't forget to commit your infantry assault. And I will commit one. all of it. And I will replace one here, uh, two here, actually. All right. Okay, so then we have the effect of this event barrage, which, as you said, all defending units are exhausted, then barrage. So those two French units are exhausted by the gas. So now I actually need, ideally, five hits to wipe them out. Let's see if that works. Okay. Okay, so 8d6. And oh, dear. I'm... 100% re-rolling that. <laughs> <laughs> good thing, good thing you see that was a good investment, that air superiority, isn't it? Yeah, I think it was good. Uh, and I'm going to roll eight again. That's way better. One, way, two, three, way four, better. five, six. And I <sighs> have two extra that I'm going to roll now. Uh, seven, eight, and another extra. Okay, eight hits. All right, so that is enough to destroy those units, presuming there's no, and I don't think there's a French response card. By the way, about air superiority, this I think was the first battle in history in which there was a, a coordinated plan to hold air superiority over a specific space. You know, the Germans had um, uh, barrier areas where they would patrol with their fighters, uh, coordination with, with Zeppelins and, uh, and balloon observers and uh, defense of the balloon observers, all as part of an advanced plan to control the airspace over Verdun. And here you just saw it in action. Let me scoot up your units for you. Oh, and that's two hits to the morale again. Indeed. So he just brought in six guys. I think we might have forgotten to adjust his morale oh, yeah. up to 10. You're probably at eight now. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now we're at that's eight. Great. It's true. We didn't bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jason, these barrages just keep coming. Really got to suck the will out of you. It, it kind of is. Except for all these Algerians or whatever the hell I'm bringing to the front. <laughs> um, I, I really want to hit him somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can what? understand that. <laughs> Why? Um... Unfortunately, the I, I I have to close this gap. I don't. I, I would like to hit him, but I have to plug. That that is a pity. Yeah. Oh, let me see these cards. Hold on. Because it's starting to look less and less like a hook. Uh, yeah. And, and more and more like a like a a bucket. Like Tannenberg in a second. <laughs> um, The problem is my remaining cards are crap and I have three spaces I really need to plug and I have two. Oh wait, no, 
I'm sorry, that I can bring on three with one, right? Yes, you do three with one, and then you will have one remaining point to actually make trenches in those two remaining spaces yeah, because you already had one here. That's so what I'm going to have to do. It's not too bad. Yeah, that's doable. Not what or I want to do, but what I can do. Just to mention some alternatives to trenches, you, uh -huh. could, you could bring in more reinforcements. Yeah. I, you also, I, remember, they're not paid by the hour, and you're at the very beginning of the battle, so, you know. Right. Um, or you could use it to start to pull out of that possible Tannenberg situation tactically. That's another option. Yeah. And you can use strategic movement on the map. For example, you could use strategic movement to take the two units in, let's say, space 17 right. hill, and distribute them elsewhere along the line. That would be a, a single AP. Well, that has some charm because either way, that's not where that salient is not where we want to be. Um, so moving these two is one. Yes, a single AP strategic moves from a single origin up to three units from that single origin to anywhere you um, exclusively control. There's a card that the German starts with called Chaos in the Rear on yeah. turn one. And uh, if you play that event, I mean, it seems like a small thing. It doubles the cost of French strategic movement for the first turn, which seems like a kind of, uh, hmm, how much does that matter? And I will tell you from hard experience, it's a real pain for the French, Chaos in the Rear. Worth the hard look as a German player, whether you want to just spend a, one and of I your was... rounds playing that. I was thinking about using it, but the thing is that I was thinking that I might need the three action points. Sure. Yeah. So, and you need the tempo. Yeah. And so, I need the tempo. I wanted yeah. to have air superiority and strike as soon as I could. Uh, yes. But yeah. Yeah. So and it's, now it's, you can't, it's too late to play. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do everything, but uh, it's really worth a hard look because it's the French. It's imagine if Jason now could only do one strategic move. You know, with two. It's, yeah. a, it's a pain. It's a real pain in the butt because the French, of course, need to bring in a lot of reinforcements in February. Okay, that looks like two, and uh, so that would have been German five, and that card is discarded. Uh, French five. And now we're going to German French five. Six. French German, French, six. Yeah. German six. French. Uh, there we go. Okay, German six. <laughs> oh. Okay, this is. The thing is that now there are armies in the open that are not protected by trenches and there is no one in reserve. Ah. Un, deux. Okay, I didn't expect to do that, but I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to play the Crown Prince to do a, a, a 14 barrage assault. So the Crown Prince was the army commander, and he controls the army reserve artillery, uh, which he has just released. And I'm going to go and attack here. And he may look like a kind of a silly guy who wears big hats, but his troops really did uh, respect him. Yeah. But I think at, at this in this era, having a big hat said something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> said it like. The Kaiser looked kind of silly himself, so it could be genetic. Uh, and I'm going to move two and move one. Ah. Uh. So notice the weakening of the, the German thrust here, right? That those troops are a little strung out. He's already only able to afford two units to, to, to be the point of the spear. Yeah, don't push it. Uh, it's a natural process. This is just... I, just... I, think, I think we're doing okay. I think we're oh, doing I think okay. you're, you're... Oh, you're doing splendid. Uh, so, and now that's 14 dice. 
So hopefully I should wipe them out before having to do anything. Uh, so 10, oof, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. I'm gonna write those down because I'm gonna get lost. Uh, so that's presuming seven. there's yeah, presuming there's no um, uh, French response card. You've already killed them. You need six hits total to wipe those guys out, right? So that's eight total, and now I can roll four dice for the four six, and that's two more hits. So that's ten total, and I roll one for the remaining six. You're now just blasting the bones to bits. Yeah, and that's eleven. So that's yeah. eleven hits. So even if there is something to block, I think it's yeah. it's 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 done. Now this may not feel like a victory, Jason, <laughs> um, but you have you have seen. Uh, this is what you have to tell the the the, the, the these uh, the families of those troops. There is you've now seen the army reserve artillery be used not on Fort Duomont and not on Fort Vaux, but just on a patch of ground, of farmland out there. So that's something. Yeah, and I, I had a lot of hits that were not used. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, it's five hits for nothing. Some some charm in the inefficiency of it. Yeah. <sighs> I feel bad. <laughs> All right, so those two French are killed. That would affect army morale. Yeah, send to stock, send to stock. Morale goes down by two. This gets flipped, and I'm gonna. Cone Prince is interesting. He lasts the whole game, but he can only be used for his 14 barrage on the first two turns. So only through April. So you get two Cone Prince barrages maximum in the game. <clears throat> and that was one of them. I'm not particularly looking forward to his repeat performance, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, French six. French six. Uh, I've got another one of these dreadfully few operation points cards um, with which I have to plug a hole again. So I will use strategic move to do this. And uh, one of those units went to to Fort Vaux, just to move mm -hmm. it over here. This is just to let you know, uh, because it's covered up by the marker here. So that red box there, this is a, a fort space, just like Duomo. It's not worth a lot of victory points. It's an, in effect a half a victory point, but it does absorb artillery barrage. Uh, it absorbs two points of artillery barrage the way a trench absorbs one. And I will use the last point of that card to pull these bozos back. Mm. And just so you know, since, uh, well, if you just, if you do tactical move like that, you have a third unit you could tactically move if you want to. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah, let's this way or this way, this way. Et voila. <laughs> Good. I'm happy with uh, I'm happy with that move. Where did the uh, third unit move? I just missed it. Into this. Yeah. Oh, from. Uh, yeah, to strengthen this. From, 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 from the front, from the north, or from the south? Just out of curiosity. Uh, from he the was, north. From the north. From yeah. The, oh, okay. Very good. All right. Last round. So round for seven the Germans, for the Germans of February. Okay. Everything is going according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'm going to be able to use that card that I've been waiting for, and I wasn't sure on which fort I was going to use it, and now it seems obvious. 
So I'm going to play the Disarmed Fortress, which is an eight barrage. Uh, but this one has the specificity that uh, the targeted fortress cannot absorb hits during the barrage. So I'm going and for this. By the here. way, represents the fact that the French thought this sector was so unimportant and the forts were so unimportant that they took artillery pieces out of the forts to uh, go elsewhere in the front, serve elsewhere on the front. So I'm going to roll a barrage of eight here. And that should put me pretty close to Verdun. And I'm committing uh, infantry. So one, two, and three. And I'm going to replace one here. And eight dice. OK, I'm rerolling that. <laughs> uh, because that would be two hits, and that would be uh, that would actually be enough to spend him, but I hope to do better. And I actually did exactly the same thing. Okay. So, <laughs> so sometimes even your air spotters aren't so great. Yeah. Okay. So the trench absorbs one. Your card means that the fortress doesn't absorb anything. So that unit, the French unit with a second hit is exhausted. So we're and set to the discard pile, and now we have infantry combat. Infantry combat. So your three is still enough to kill the French. The French are in a height because the fort, remember, does not help uh, ever with infantry, only barrage, only artillery. Right? So the height, I would get an additional hit, right? Yes. So that's, so that's two hits on the Germans, and the French are eliminated. And was that Theomol has fallen? Yeah. And that's half a point only. Uh, it's and it's rounded down. Yes. Okay, so it's nothing. Yeah. It's going to end up being nothing. Yeah. Nothing. You get nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, I got a fort. Yes. <laughs> yes, you have a good position there. So. Yeah, and I'm literally one space away from Verdun. But it feels so far, <laughs> even if it's so close, but still pretty far away. The thing that makes yes. me happy is that I see that no one is in the reserve. Yeah. So everything will have to be actually from emptying that pocket here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which I never really managed to do. It was more of a threat of a pocket more than an actual thing that I could really deliver on. But yeah. Okay, so that's the last, that's it for the Germans for February. So the French get one final round. <sighs> okay. So recall that the French during this um, turn can only tactically move one space rather than two. Uh, that's an issue. But recall, you also can strategic move again from the map. And in addition to the pocket, I'll just point out there's a little French salient. How do I do the pointer thing? Uh, control click or I'll click in, on the PC, I think. Yeah, space 10. If you look at that, that that's, a, that's actually a little unit that's sticking out in a salient that if he's removed, he doesn't uh, expose any. Yeah, um, it, it doesn't open up a hole. Just to just yeah. to mention that because you're usually not looking over there, yeah. but uh, of course you've got as uh, other possibilities. Well, I have three spaces to cover basically, and two operations points with which to do it. Yes. And when, if I use strategic move, I can. So it would be from one space to any space. But if you only if you do it from space ten, that would be only one unit anywhere. Exactly. That'd be just one unit for that MP. Mm -hmm. So you've got yeah, as as Fred mentioned, you've got other. Um, places to come from. But the only way to reach uh, the Fort Belleville in uh, Space 59 for you would be strategic movement because of that turn one 
restriction on restriction. French capitals. Right. Yeah. So, I'll just point out something for the future because it's interesting. So the fact that the artillery was so ineffective in that last uh, German attack meant that two German units there were exhausted yeah. and only one fresh remains. So next turn for attacking towards Verdun, there's really only one unit that you can attack with because at least at first, now you can refresh those units, you can rotate fresh for um, exhausted units but in terms of the very next thing the Germans will be able to do at the beginning of March, there's only one fresh unit to attack uh, Belleville. That's, that's consequent. Mm. And the, so the thing is that on the next turn, I will necessarily have to, um, to lose the tempo. I will probably have to pay, uh, play a high up score to reorganize my front because now yes. I'm reaching look the at, operational limit yes. of my offensive. Exactly. Look at the, look at the shape of your front. Um, you know, yeah, sorry, uh... Voko. I had to do what I could. Uh, I was about to take the like the whole right bank uh, in a pocket, like I needed to push it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So this is the thing: is the uh, the attacker gets disorganized, and it it flows naturally out of the model, right? There's not a attacker disorganization rule to sh to talk. You can see from the the movement and the fighting of the units how it is that this happened, which is uh, makes it such a such a, 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 a an attractive model to me. Well, we grabbed two guys from here and um, strategic moved out of the salient on the uh, west on the side. Ten. Yeah. And that is that. And that would be the end of uh, February 1916. Correct. So what you would be doing now, so first at the end of every turn, not every every hand, uh, sorry, every seven rounds, every hand of cards is a month, right? So that was February. And typically, if you look at the turn track, it's two months, two hands of cards before you end the turn, count victory points and reshuffle. But the first turn is different. We just pack a lot of action into the first days of the, the German offensive unleashing. So we're going to do a victory point accounting and then we're gonna form new decks and then we'll go on to March. So for victory points, the, there are two things that have, that have happened on the map. The Germans captured a single fort, uh, Thiamon there. That's not enough for any points because you need two forts to get a single point. All the other forts remain in French hands. So that's no points geographic points for the Germans. The French hold one space, Duomont, that has a three blue circle. That three blue circle means the French, if they hold that at the end of a turn, get three victory points. So for holding Duomont, um, uh, the, the score drops from 12 German to nine German. So doing that is the same as saving the lives of three French divisions, if you like three French units. And that's it for scoring. So now we would go on in the physical game, we would assemble our decks for turn two. We'd go through all the cards we've been using and we'd look, is it a red circle in the two or a white? If it's a white, we throw it out. If it's a red in two, we keep it. And then we would also take the remainder of the cards that we haven't been using yet that have a red in the circle two, and we would assemble our new turn two decks. Now, I believe Tim in this vassal module has allowed us to do that with a push of a button automatically. Should so I think if I, um, so there's a turn thing. So if we click on the turn track, I don't know if let's, you've done it. Let's try it. You, are you doing it or am I doing it? You're doing it. Okay, I'm clicking on turn and nothing happens. <laughs> 
is what? that it maybe wasn't what I was supposed to click on. Maybe I'm supposed to do that because I've got the solitaire. I wonder if it's messing up that I'm. Oh, no, no, no. I know what it is. I know why. Because it, yeah. it pops up a specific window and I would go on turn two. Yeah, here it is. Oh, you did it. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So the turn marker is advanced to March. That's good. And um, so now you should go in and check. You should have in your deck window, you should have all the turn two cards together and no more. You know, red, red circle two. And you're going to need that because unlike turn one, you're each going to get to pick a card. You actually get to go fish into the deck for any one card you want. And that's going to be true the rest of the game. The only game turn that that's not true is turn one. So, for example, let's say you wanted to really push air superiority. You could find an air superiority card. If you decided, I really, really want those flamethrowers because I missed out on them last turn, you could go for flamethrowers. For the French, very typically on turn two, they're going to be thinking about Voix Sacre because it's 12 units that arrive, 12 units for the French into uh, reserve for zero victory points. Inside this context, how do I grab a card out of the deck? So you have a... Oh, next yeah, to your... I see it's drawn to hand. I got it. Yeah. And how many cards can you pick? Any number? So you are allowed to select one, yeah. and then you randomly draw another seven to get okay. you to eight. So it's for both of you, it's going to be eight cards every month for the rest of the game. Pick one and draw, draw up to eight. If you held a card from the previous turn you would you would draw until you got to eight so one effectively I, I'm one not, plus i'm seven. not sure the module reshuffled the cards uh i think we probably need to right click on the discard to shuffle uh yeah send this card prompt to the drug deck only at the beginning of a turn yeah so i'm gonna do that for both of us all right and it should have removed the cards that are uh one cards Hmm. Oh yeah, and Fortress des Armées was only on was only on turn one. Ugh. Where are my flamethrowers? <laughs> I think you can I think the flamethrowers oh, yeah. are, are there. Yeah, they are back. They should be yeah. There. They should be back, yeah. yeah but they only back. last one more turn, so Oh, yeah, they're yeah. only active one more turn. So. Yeah, they're only active, which is two months. They'll be active because now every turn is two months. But they're only basically, they would be good for March and April if you've got them now. Yeah, I might do it. Uh, what do I do with the card that I had remaining from the previous turn? You can keep it or discard it. Uh, and you can only keep it if it's a red two. But if it is a red two, you may keep it or you may just, you may shuffle it back into the deck and draw before you draw your hand. Oh yeah, but uh, it was only available in in turn one, so we. Then, you, then it's it. out of the game. Yeah. It's out of the game. Then we draw seven cards, and here we go. And what you're not seeing, if you're watching, is that the uh, the French cards are going to be a little bit better this time, uh, and some of the larger, more powerful German cards are already out, and that accelerates, so that when we get by the time we get to the summer, the French are on a. a uh, more equal footing. And when we get to September, October, and especially November, December, the Germans are burying their dead uh, and the and the French have the big artillery and every, everything else. So just to be clear, on turn two, we're going to play two hands, right? Two hands of seven. Two hands of seven on turn two because each hand is a month. Yeah. Okay, so and that means between, that a level, yeah, okay. In between, the deck will not be reshuffled. You have, you're going to be drawing from the same deck for the, for the second month of the turn. And there's also no victory points. There's no victory points until the end of the second month. So now the Germans have two hands of cards to take the next set of objectives. Cool. 
Good. But I'm ready. Then, Jason, I will ask you, do you want to play another hand of cards or do you want to finish at another time, which is fine, because I know that Volko has to go in 15 minutes? Um, however you think it's best to proceed. I mean, we I, I, in 15 minutes, I guess we're not going to get all the way through even this hand, are we? No, I don't think so. Definitely not. But maybe what we can do is do a break here, uh, and then we can and then we can finish just the two of us at another time. And what we can do in the last fifteen minutes is maybe get uh, your impressions of the game and discuss a bit uh, the model and everything, and have and maybe ask some questions to Volko about it. What do you think? Absolutely. Sounds good. That, make, that makes the most sense, I think. Cool. But then I will. So I will remove the the. The, the vessel module uh, from the stream like this and going back to uh, to this mode. Um, and so maybe just the first question to, to you, Jason. So how did you how did you feel about it, <laughs> about the whole experience? Well, um, I think, you know, anytime you have a reaction where you start to play a game and um, you you want to play again immediately so that you can rectify your errors you know that's a good sign yeah. um and additionally i am always just an enormous fan of any designer who manages to uh put the burden of the simulation of history on the design itself rather than the players who have to like parcel through how uh or remember additional rules or whatever it is to make the historical outcome or the historical options um you know array themselves here uh, it, it felt like world war one was was playing out all by itself and i was just along for the ride to a certain extent making mistakes like a good french general <laughs> at least at that time they did better afterwards <laughs> they did they did and actually they did they end up doing pretty well here anyway but um yes but it's yeah it's i, I agree with you it's really interesting because as we've seen the system is quite simple uh like there is not that many options that you have with your ops points it's pretty straightforward the events are relatively simple but you really have that feeling of putting more and more men into a meat grinder and it's it feels awful <laughs> and that's the thing that i felt playing the games the first few times is um and not the first few times all all along it, it it's you realize that those blocks are just you know they are an abstraction but in the end you're just sending more and more blocks and more and more blocks and you start thinking it's like and you see them getting tired and you send more and you send more and you send more and if you really have that sense of dread at some point where you're thinking about what am I doing? <laughs> like what is, and you're literally uh, fighting over and over for a hill. And I, I, I remember that I think it was my second game where I, I think it took me three offensive to go to Fort Duomo. And I really wanted to have it. And at some point I was like, ah, I finally had it. And at the end of the turn, I had half a point and I was like, my God, how many <laughs> men died for this? And it felt awful. Uh, and it's, yeah. And it's quite yeah. interesting. And I was going to say, you know, playing the French, Jason, you get very quickly used to seeing your troops be be blasted to bits. With the Germans, um, you typically start out, you're not losing any men. I mean, we hadn't seen any German units get killed. But you get to a certain point that that tips and suddenly a German uh, infantry assault goes awry against mm. three fresh French troops in trenches and it's a slaughter. And suddenly the Germans are like, whoa, what, what? <laughs> what just happened? And you get that a moment like that in almost every game. Yeah. And I think that's uh, that happened for, for me in, in one of, of my games where with the Germans, I really felt like victory is mine. And then I have and I slowly see I saw the 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 game revert back and I was like and as you said I was like but what's happening I've been on the offensive all along but I was really getting tired and I was to my limit and then I started get punched really hard and I was like and my front was completely collapsing because I was in the opposite situation but the problem was I didn't have trench most of my units were tired and when French started pushing back when I was so close to Verdun I was like but I have I have nothing I'm not ready for this and it just felt like I, it, yeah it was and and you have right now, 
uh, in in February, the French have almost no artillery, a little, they have a little, but mm. almost no, they don't have the time. They have to organize their defense. They don't have a time for any counteroffensive, even tactically, even, you know, a small one. But getting into the spring and the summer, for the Germans to take a place, they're usually attacking three fresh French yeah. units dug in. And that French player has artillery cards, has barrages. So now the, French, the Germans go in, they fight an infantry battle, and now the French hits them with a barrage. It's, it's very, very hard and bloody to take a little piece of mud, you know, the next piece of mud. And, and that's the thing. That, oh, yeah, go ahead, Jason. I, I was going to say, I, I, I can't recall any game that I, I, I can't think of any war game that handles attrition quite so elegantly. And the perverse part of it is, um, in a weird way, it's by not worrying about it, right? You just can have as many units as you possibly want. Uh, it just causes you victory points, but it, it, it has this weird cycle to it that um, can't help but remind you of what World War I was like. And it, it really does. The relationship is very tight between the reinforcements you take and the ground you have to take. Because for the French, the more points you give up to the Germans, the more ground you're going to have to take back later when you have the guns to do it. And now you really have to expend those, you know, those troops. Exactly. You get to the point where like, oh, to take back enough of the victory points, I'm going to need more guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the and only certain... answer is more death. <laughs> yeah, more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, which which the system does really quite yeah really quite well uh, definitely especially for the for the for the full campaign and there is one thing that you haven't seen yet Jason but the thing is that sometimes the German succeed in an offensive and then you I just have troops because I did a barrage I don't have ops points so I the Germans couldn't have built a, a trench in the spot that they just took and you just have sometimes two or three fresh units just waiting here in a in an open field and then the french are like well you guys are gonna have just <laughs> hell yeah. and you're like and actually taking a spot is almost is super dangerous and you're like can i really do i want to take it because if i take it i'm just gonna send people just to die because they're gonna take it but then they are gonna be completely exposed to yeah. to to um to to artillery from 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 the french and it it's a it's a heartbreaking game. I would say yeah. it's it's really tough. And and Walter achieves that that particular aspect with the simple dynamic of where you're allowed to build trenches, which is yeah, you have to have controlled the space at the beginning of the turn to build a trench there. You can they can be contested. You can build trenches where both of you have troops, but you can't. There's no way to walk into a place and have a trench, or fight into a place and have a trench. There's always a opportunity. For the enemy to barrage you before you dig your trench, that's I mean, and it's just baked into the 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 nature of the actions. The other thing I think that's just interesting about the design is you know ordinarily you think of um, anything involving World War One as being as being sort of a set piece and static, and this game has so much fluidity to it. Um, which is also not something that in my head I uh, affiliate with Verdun at all, which, you know, just has this meat grinder thing to it. Um, and the fluidity sort of, it, it reminded me of the difference between American chess or uh, not American chess, I should say standard chess and uh, like Shogi or one oh, of those yeah. other Asian games where there's, um, you have to, it, it's not so much about, um, positioning as it is about tempo and how you keep the push going. Yeah, and then when yeah. the push dies out, well, get ready. Uh, now you're going to be swapping your pieces out. And it's true that there is a big tempo element to it, which I think is really interesting because you do really have that sense of um, uh, operational limits. Like you're having your push, but at some point you have to stop reorganize before planning for another push and you really have this sense that you cannot just keep on pushing and pushing or or have a mix it's either it's either or and it's like yeah you're going to push 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 up until it's almost a push your luck mechanic and then you're like at some point you have to decide when to stop and when to reorganize to have a bigger push afterwards yeah. and but then it's giving up the tempo what are you 
pro pro proposing to the opponent to do what they are going to be able to do when you're going to give up the tempo to start reorganizing. And it feels a bit like a, this back and forth is, is really super and, interesting. And that tension only amplifies as the turns go on because an element that we don't see in this first you know, turn that we played is that there are a number of events that are very important for victory points that represent things going on elsewhere. The Brusilov Offensive mm. or uh, uh, diplomacy to bring America closer to war. And both sides have these events that are worth a pile of victory points. All you have to do is play the event, basically. Um, but if you play the event, you're not barraging, you know, yeah. you're not using as many, right? And so the question is, which side is putting so much tactical pressure on the battlefield that the other side is not able to fire those events? Mm. And, it, and it represents the, the relationship between, for example, with the Somme, the French originally wanted to be a very big part of the Somme offensive, but they were under so much pressure at Verdun that it kept shrinking and shrinking and shrinking until it was largely, but not completely, but largely a, a British show when it finally fired off late on, on in July. And that's in the game. If the French are pretty comfortable, they can get a lot of points from a big French Somme offensive. But if the Germans are putting enough pressure on, it's hard for the the French to get those cards off and you miss out on those victory points. And so lots of freedom in terms of how you, you know, what you want to prioritize, but that, but yet another kind of factor that comes in that, you know, can I afford to pause my tempo to support a Somme offensive or not? You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. There, that's a lot of elegance. Also uh, another illustration of elegance that you could have a game of this, uh, a game that's tactical, but it's, incorporating um, the strategic element of the war um, without any additional layer. Yeah, it's all Just, in the card deck. Yeah. So there are a couple of uh, questions from the chat. Uh, maybe we can take them. Uh, and the first one is uh, from Alan asking, how does the game do solo? I must admit, I've never played it solo. I only played it one-on-one, uh, -on -one. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know, Voku, if you've played it solo before. Uh, I absolutely have. I've played it quite a bit um, solo. And uh, because as with any game that I end up getting fascinated with, I tinker with little variants, you know, mm. and things. And so I've tried them out um, as, as well as just, uh, just the strategies. And it plays solo as well as any two-player CDG plays solo. So I find... I, I enjoyed CDG solo a lot because I can get my two hands of cards and I don't, I pick up one and I've already forgotten what's in the other hand, you know? And uh, so I don't have any trouble playing two roles. So if you play CDGs solo a lot and enjoy that, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy Verdun solo as well. If you find that it, it doesn't feel right to you because of the hidden information in the card hands, this has that same issue. Good. And then there is another question from Joe Boyle about, um, like, so he was saying that he agreed with Jason, the economy is really interesting. And that's one of the really interesting aspects of the game. He was wondering if we knew about other games that used yeah. the same kind of mechanic. That would be a question for both of you. I do have one that comes to mind pretty straight away. That's Napoleon's Triumph, where actually the French committing the reinforcement means that the victory condition changes. Uh, so that's one of the examples I have in mind. But what other examples do you have in mind? You know what it makes me think of, but in a different way, is going back to 1984, is Nick Karp's uh, Vietnam, 1965 to 1975, when you play from, from, from Victory Games. When you play the um, strategic game, you have, as, as the Americans, uh, complete freedom. You can bring in the entire reinforcement order of battle or nothing or everything in between. You can search. It's up to you how you escalate the war. But the hitch is you're using up your own strategic will, the more you bring in and the faster you bring in, the more expensive it is. And the more you bring in, the more it escalates the conflict and the more the, the, the Soviets and the Chinese give the communist side. And so the NBA player also gets more. Um, but what, what struck me as, as so cool about that is the, the wide degree and freedom that I had in, in really an, it's, you know, it's a grand operational game. You're you know, you're actually maneuvering units and fighting battles and all that, but you also get to have that higher level command level of saying, I'm going to fight a big war with a big footprint right away, 
or I'm going to be gradual, or I'm going to fight a very limited war. You, you, you and they, that comes in by total mm. freedom. And what reinfor- what reinforcements would you like today? Take your pick. Do, do you think about another example, Jason? I mean, it, it seems to me there are a lot of games where you have the victory point um, for units trade off. There's even, I, I think, even war in Europe has that, um, or in some of these older. SPI 1980s, late 70s kinds of designs. But in none of those games did I, uh, in none of those games did I have this quite, quite the same sensation because um, it's always a, dis- it's normally like a discrete set of units that you can access. Like I can do uh, if I, or, or a Napoleonic game where you get to commit the guard, and but if you commit the guard, it costs you a victory point yeah. or whatever. That's very discreet. In this game, it's just like, well, here's some more blue blocks. How many more blue blocks do you want? Yeah. Just keep taking them. It's and fine. And the proportion, the, the number of victory points that come from the blue blocks as opposed to things on the map, right? You right. Know, I mean... It was 12 victory points to the Germans, not for taking anything, just for encouraging the French to bring in, you know, more More troops. troops. And so that fits this battle so well, because the whole strategy was attrition based. You know, we're going to we don't really care about Verdun. We just want the French to stand there so that we can kill them. That's why we're attacking here. Right. And so that balance of the real objective having to do with the number of troops committed and destroyed, that balance shows up in the victory conditions and in a, sure. in a way that is, is I think, unique in games, but fitting almost uniquely to this battle. Yeah. I, there's some other, it, it, it's very interesting, the sensation of how, um, how you're playing a tactical game, but somehow it's divorced from geography or the, the geography doesn't matter. And almost everything else, I mean, it, it matters, but not in the way that it would in a classical war game where you're trying to get to this victory point hex and there's a star here. And if I get to this star by turn six, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's like, well, um, yeah, I want to hold on to these fortresses and there are these few victory points out here, but I'm going to spend many, many, many more victory points uh to hold on to that hex or that space in this case, then yeah, yeah. um, then the value of that space itself. Be- because at the end of the battle, it's an acre of mud. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's it. So exactly. Thank you and, so much. I have to yeah, go. Yeah, I think we have to go. Uh, we, we can un- end at, the, at this stop. It was a it was a good final quote uh, for a, for an acre of mud, uh, which is uh, <laughs> which is very thematic. Of Wallace's sequel. Yes. <laughs> But uh, thanks again for to both of you for playing this game. Thanks, Volko, for teaching us. Um, Jason, happy to finish the game whenever you want in the coming awesome. week. I'm home alone uh, for for a while, so I'm happy to uh, happy to play. Uh, Th- thanks, thanks for everyone so. who. Thanks for your ahead. supporters for choosing this game. This was great. Yes, yeah, and awesome. I think we'll give them an opportunity to choose another game for uh, for another month if you're still available, Volko. Uh, I think that would be a, that could be something that we keep on doing on an ongoing basis. Would love to. Um, and uh, thank I you for the have... superb explanation, also, Volko. I could, in fact, if you would just go through my entire pile, that would <laughs> we'd both be happier. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, all. And I hope that uh, we'll see you again on the show, Jason. Have a good evening, everyone, and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.